Hello everyone, Adam Hill Vending. In this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give an overview of what a Snyder Lance distribution route is. If you've never heard of it before, I'm gonna go over what it is. I'm gonna go over some of the cost associated with it, pros, cons, and then if we have any questions. If you're watching this, have any questions, leave it down below. Obviously our main business is uh, vending machines. We have 100 vending machines in uh, Tampa Bay, Florida. But because of the Rona and them shutting down access, going down 50% in revenue during uh, last year, looking a little bit to diversify some of our, our assets. And the one thing that didn't close or lock down was what? A few different things, but grocery stores. Grocery stores did not close down. So an overview, what is a Snyder Lance distribution route? It's basically a territory, a geographical territory. They have them all across the country. Everything's cut up. Where there's different grocery stores, possibly gas stations, um, could be club stores, it just depends. In that geographic location, you own that territory. You're buying the distribution rights of, in this case, Snyder Lance to that territory. Um, and then what happens is you receive product from Snyder Lance Cape Cod, Archway Cookies, Snyder Pretzels, whatever brands, uh, in this case, some of the grocery store brands, um, depending on the area you're in, you'll have those brands and then you load them on your truck or trailer and you sell them to the grocery stores that are on your route, the authorized stores uh, that are on your route and you get a commission, okay? You get a commission maybe 15%, maybe 20%, depending on your area, you get paid. So let's provide an example. If you buy a route, these routes come available like bread routes, Snyder routes, uh, Pepperidge Farm routes. The cost of these routes is based on what's called a multiple, a weekly sales multiple. So if you sell in your geographic area, uh, if you do a 52 week average of around 10,000 in sales, to those stores, and let's say your commission is 15%, obviously you get a check for $1,500, assuming you own the route outright. The cost of that route is gonna be based on a multiple. So depending on, again, the area, how busy it is, if you're in rural, um, city, whatever, there's a lot of variables to go in, but let's say it's 25 to one, okay? Your 52 week average, your weekly sales will be 10,000. And let's say it's 25 to one. That means that route would cost $250,000. Now, let me, let me step back. You can sell it for as much as you can possibly get, but on average, they go by a multiple and m most people have to pay that multiple. And in this case, let's go with 25 to one, 25 times weekly sales, okay? Now, we're gonna get into some of the pros and cons here. One of the benefits of a Snyder Lance route is that you can get financing for it pretty easy pretty easy you can get financing for a, a distribution route because Campbell's Campbell's soup company owns Pepperidge Farm owns Snyder's owns them and what you'll find out is that they guarantee all the loans so you get uh, you'll get a loan and you have to put about 20% down again depends on your area 20% down so 250,000 you put 50,000 down you'll finance 200,000 and make the payment. If you default on that payment, they will repossess your route, sell it. If there's any proceeds, you get it, and they'll sell the route again. So the reason that it's easy to get financing is because the bank is guaranteed the loan from a billion dollar company. That's the first thing. Okay, so that's a positive. So we went into the basic overview, right? You have a territory, there's a, there's a warehouse somewhere, you order in the different stuff that you need for your stores that go on the shelf. You put it on the shelf. You order that product in. You go to the warehouse. You pick up the, the product in your truck, trailer, wherever, and you take it to the grocery store. If you have three, five, ten convenience store, how many ever in your route, you sell it in and you get a commission direct deposited uh, the next week on what you sell. Okay? So that's a brief overview of how it works. Again, if you have questions, we're going to do more in-depth on this Snyder Lance, but drop them in the comments. Um, let's get into some positives of a Snyder Lance. Protected territory. 
In vending, it's the wild west, okay? In the vending, you can say you have a contract, but you can lose a route or get a route um, pretty easily, okay? You can sidestep the service agreement or contract pretty easily. It, no one can come into the, this territory that I own the rights to and take that, okay? So you have a protected territory. So that is a benefit, okay? There's a structure in place. There's already a structure in place. You're working with a billion dollar brand. They've already figured out the pricing. They've already figured out the planogram. All you have to do is execute the system. It's similar to kind of a franchise model, um, but we'll go on the, the negatives of that in a minute of how that could be a downside. So you have a protected territory. There's already a structure in place, like running a Subway franchise. They already know the sandwiches. They already do the marketing. You're just executing the system, okay? Another positive is the schedule. You can kind of work your own schedule. As long as you get the job done, you're good. You can start when delivery hours open, when receiving hours open. You can start at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. That may be done by 10. Be home with your kids, okay? Another thing, you don't have to worry about machines. Machines breaking down, moving machines, um, credit card readers, and all the headaches that go with vending machines and equipment. There's no equipment. Your truck, maybe a trailer or box truck, whatever you have, and a couple magliner dollies to move your product, and that's, that's your um, equipment, upfront equipment, okay? So don't have to worry about the whole negative side of vending, changing compressors, coils, vandalized all the different aspects of vending okay so those are some of the positives now i saw a question come in here if you have a question as we're going just drop it in the comments does or does the route require a huge down payment depending on the route so like pepperidge farm routes goldfish goldfish pepperidge farm in my area they're going at a multiple of 45 to 1 so think about that snyder's is 25 to 1 a Pepperidge Farm goldfish route, Milano Cookies, they're going for a multiple of 45 to one. So if it does a 52 week average of $10,000, that's gonna cost $450,000. The reason, they get 20% commission. They get a higher rate commission, less intensive, less shelf space, less skews, a little bit easier. You have an eight foot section in the grocery store that you just keep higher priced items higher commission. So it costs a little bit more. Let's go into the negatives. Oh, but the, the down payment, the down payment is what they required for is 20%, 20%. So for us, we bought our Snyder Lance route, 250,000, put 50,000 down and we financed it. They financed you for 10 years. Our payments like 2,100 a month. Okay. Negatives, which we're running into right now with the Snyder Lance route which happens with vending too, is you have no control of the product availability. No control of the product availability or pricing. That's all controlled by them. So you, what you do is you put, in, you put in your order on your iPad to the warehouse. That warehouse sees your order and they'll send you what they send you basically. You'll get an email. You get three deliveries a week. They'll send you an email on what your cuts are, meaning you can order... Um, 100 cases and they may only give you 30 30 cases of product because right now with everything going on they're saying they can't have truck drivers they can't run the um the manufacturing plants they can't find workers a lot of different issues they're saying which it, to me side note i'll get into this let me let me get into this a little bit if i'm running snyder lance and i have cape cod and snyder pretzels I'm not worrying about the butter doodle pretzels. I'm going to get the top 10 SKUs in each category, top five, and we're going to pump that out. I'm not going to worry about snickerdoodle popcorn and all of the wide range of SKUs. We're going to sell the top sellers. But let me get back to the, let me get back to the, some negative. So you have no control of product availability. You can order a hundred pallets, but they're going to decide what they give you based on availability on their end. Okay. Pricing. And vending, you can change your price of your cans. You can sell a can for $2 at a location. Here, they set the price, they work that out with the grocery stores and you get a commission based on what you sell to them. So there's no, um, no pricing there. Um, now, 
one of the reasons how you can make money with the Snyder Lance route is if it's, uh, if it's being run poorly, right? So let's say a route has an average of 7,000 weekly average and you just know that it can do 10,000, right? So you can build in that equity. You could build up the sales and either sell it and realize that 25 to one increase in equity, or you can just make that extra income. So there's the value add. The value add is really, is really in increasing the sales. Another negative is that you're, you're at the mercy of the store or the area, you're in, the area that you are in in order to grow. In order to grow sales with Snyder Lance, you need to talk to the managers, maybe get front end caps, maybe get some displays. Um, but if it's a slow store, I mean, it's slow sales, it's gonna be hard, just like a vending location. If it only has 25 employees, it's gonna, you can't squeeze uh, any more money out of that account. So you're at the mercy of the store and the area. Now, another negative of the Snyder Lance is I like to refer to this as um, when you're an employee, let's do it this way. When you're an employee, you work for a company completely told what to do. When you can take time off, that's great. No, not, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with any of these stages that I'm going to describe. But when you're an employee, you get told what to do. You have the structure, you do it. Great. When you're in vending, right, you decide what machines to buy, you decide if you wanna buy an account, you decide if I wanna take that account, what my pricing is gonna be, how often I'm gonna to go to that account, when I wanna to go to that account, you kind of free range, what credit card reader I wanna use on that account, do I wanna do two tier pricing? You get the point, you're in control. This is kind of in the middle ground, it's like a franchise basically where you still have, um, structure in place. There's a district manager who go around and check your chips and see your dates and kind of nitpick you a little bit on, hey, where did you get this? Is this in stock? Is this not in stock? Where for seven years, <laughs> you know, no one in the vending side, yeah, the accounts can call and, you know, there's some cl complaints, but you can decide uh, what you want to do. I can decide what I want to do, what machines I want to buy. If I want to sell this route, I'll sell this off. There's more, more hands in here. You have the district manager, plus you have the stores who they constantly want the shelves filled and they want you in at this time. And then you have receivers at the, at the back uh, dock where you sell in, who scan you in, who control the back dock. They sometimes think they run the entire store. You can deal with uh, issues with that. So let me see if I saw a chat here. Do you stock shelves or is it drop shipping? Yes. Yeah, so for us, we have to stock the shelves. You get the product, take it to the grocery store, sell it to the grocery store, roll it to the shelves, and put it on the shelves. You put it on the shelves. Put it where it goes. You know, where this goes, this goes, load it on the shelves, roll out. Now, there's only three deliveries a week. Depending on the stores, uh, how busy it is, they require... Depending on the sales of that store is how often you have to go there. So if it's a slower store, by contract, you have to go there maybe two days a week. If it's a busier store, the most, you have to go five times a week. But with the grocery stores, your busiest times are on the weekends, Saturday, Sundays, when most people do their grocery shopping. So, um, so there's that. Yes, you put the product on the shelf to answer your question. Now, um... So the last negatives was, yes, you are not your own, you're not your, your own boss. You're not telling them what you're doing. They're going to tell you what they want. They're going to tell you what space you get. They're going to tell you they're resetting the store, move this here, move this there. You're just executing the system that they have in place. So there's not a negative to that. That's just is what it is. So I hope this kind of uh, provides some overview. If you're interested in a Snyder Lance route or a Pepperidge Farm route, you know, they're all kind of similar, a bread route. These are all different variables that go into it, but um, that's what you have to look for. Basically, you're running the route, okay? You want to find, the reason we bought this particular route is because it's the high, we only have three stores that we have to worry about. Three stores. Two main ones and, and one that's a couple times a week. Other people in other territories in the same county have... 10, 15 different stores, little baby stores, 
that they have to go to. The worst accounts are the convenience stores that you have to go to that you put, you know, you make 15% and you deliver $100 worth of product and, uh, and you make $15. It's not worth turning the truck off to go to it. Frito-Lay route, the same. Frito-Lay is completely owned. You know, they're corporate. You can't buy a Frito-Lay route, at least in our area. Uh, but yeah, they're all employees and they have to hit X number of dollars in sales to hit their, to get their pay, to get their bonus and all that stuff. They work Frito-Lay. Frito-Lay is about four times the shelf space as Snyder Lance. So they have so much, so much product, multi-packs, Cheetos, everything. Frito-Lay runs the, the chip game. Snyder Lance is definitely not the number one in that category. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Um, but overall, overall, it's a, it's a play to, you know, protect yourself if you are worried about, uh, income, if you, if you're scared of, not scared is not the right word, but if you're worried about fixing machines and doing all that, and you wanted a more of a structured route just to implement the, the system that they have, a Snyder Lance of Pepperidge Farm may not be a bad play. Another benefit that I didn't get into is if you want to sell, People can, you can buy and sell these routes because the financing is easy to get. So you can buy and sell these routes with relative ease, okay? So if I wanted to sell this Snyder Lance route, pretty sure within six months I could have it sold, okay? To try and sell vending, you, it's gonna be hard, if not near impossible to sell my whole business in one sum because you're not going to get a loan for it because banks will not loan on vending. So as far as my experience, they'll, they'll loan on new machines, on new machines they will, on equipment they will, but when it comes to a multiple of sales at a location, they're not really uh, feeling that. So I hope that helps. I can dive deeper into in each of these aspects. Just want to do an overview video now that I've uh, been involved in the Snyder Lance for a few months now, understanding the pros and cons of, of what goes into it. So let's see if we have any. So Tommy Cash, thanks for, uh, thanks for hopping in. Thanks everybody for joining the live stream. If you have a question on the replay, go ahead and drop it in the comments. And remember tomorrow, another live stream, 12 o'clock. We're going to be going over how to set up a bill acceptor and using online to um, using online to get some accounts. Tommy Cash, I was showing someone a few stops to buy. Showing someone, so you're selling some, uh, got some routes for sale. Right. So again, if you need help, next day she says she has the Rona. The Rona's going around, okay? Which, be careful when you're buying stops, are they actually gonna do, you know, are they going to do what they were doing pre-COVID? Are those stops still gonna produce that same amount of revenue? Have to find out, have to find out if people are even going back to work. So if you need help vending, we have the ebook, hillvending uh, hillvending.com forward slash ebook. If you need, uh, the full course, how to get started in vending, hillvending.teachable.com, full 30-day money-back guarantee. You can watch everything, take everything, day 28, get your full refund. I believe if you're watching this content, you are, uh, you know, you're interested. You're interested. You're watching this far, you're kind of interested, but you don't know how to put the pieces together because there's not a lot of great content out there showing you, well, what's this, what's that? So that's why I put that together. Richard tried purchasing a location with machines, but the seller refused to let me purchase, qualify the account, and turn down the deal. Do you buy locations based off seller, seller's word? Um, if they don't have credit card readers, you kind of have to. Have to go. But go by what they say. But if you see the business, if you see the... Uh, you know, you see the account, you see the number of people that are there, the, the cars, the condition of the machines, the pricing, feel them out, talk to them. 
Again, when you're buying a location, the main thing that people do is they overpay for an account. They say it does 20,000 in sales and they want 40,000, or they say it does 20 and they want more. Always, always, always have to come down on that because how soon can you get your money back, okay? So, tried purchasing a location with machines, but seller refused to let me purchase qualify the account. I'm not sure what purchase qualify means. What do you mean by purchase qualify? You wanted to go look at the machines? If they didn't let you go and look at the machines, that's a red flag. Yeah. You want to be able to look at the equipment. You want to be able to see is there expired stuff in the machine? What's the quality? Open them up. Look at the bill validator. Look and see what kind of shape that machine is in. Again, with the Snyder Lance, don't have to worry about any of that. Now, you won't make as much money with Snyder Lance. There's not much upside with, then with vending, but you're not as protected with vending. So there's pros and cons. There's yin and yang. It's whatever you feel protected to. Look at the machines. If, yeah, if you cannot look at the machines and, and buy the location, then it's, I would say it's probably a scam. Probably a, a scam or, or something. Just like Investment Joy saying you can buy, make money with $300 machines. The thing that these YouTube channels don't tell you is he's making $250,000 off of YouTube revenue, um, not off of his $300 vending machine. If you cannot view the machine, that's insane. If you can't view the account and the machine to qualify it, yeah, then there's no, there's no reason to uh, go any further. There's nothing to talk about. Why would they not let you look at the machines? I'm going to buy a car, but I can't, I can't physically test drive the car. That seems like a scam to me, which with vending, there's probably, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of the healthy vending, healthy vending. You know, one of the big uh, franchise things I think is healthy for you. If you have any experience with that, please comment below that. I'd love to have you on, do a, an interview of your experience with healthy for you. Some of these franchise model vending businesses that sell you $10,000 Sega combo machines that are complete trash and most people are not going to be profitable with them. Um, if you have any experience with that, let me know. Let's share some knowledge. The minimum required investment is 50000 Okay. It's insane. This is insane. They're going to give you all this teaching. They're over complicating the process. I guarantee you come down here. You can work with me one-on-one. -on -one. We'll do a two-day seminar. $5,000 would be well worth 50000 here. We'll look at machines. We'll go to accounts. All the training you need plus one-year support. So if you want to do that, email me, adam at hillvending.com. You can come down here. We'll go to actual locations. We'll look hands-on touch machines. I'm not going to tell you, oh, here's this combo machine. You're going to make all this money. I'm going to take you to an actual, actual accounts that are producing thousands. Guys, I have multiple accounts that do over 10000 a month in sales. Okay, like seven years, 100 machines. <laughs> the course is, if you're actually serious about getting involved in vending, 500 bucks is like peanuts. So, um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's why I made the course. Made the course to try and help people to succeed because I wish when I started seven years ago, I wouldn't have spend, spent thousands of dollars on the wrong machines, spinning my wheels in the proverbial mud. I can't tell you how many machines I had to scrap from my initial route purchase. If I had to go back seven years ago, would have stuck with two brands of machines, slower growth, more quality, quality over quantity. And the problem with healthy you vending, or if you Google how to start a vending business, it, everything's such a scam. It's crazy. I don't see anyone out there like me who has an actual business. We've got employees. We've got a warehouse. We've got box trucks. I don't see anybody like that on the internet in the entire world. Obviously, there's people out there, but they're not on YouTube sharing. They're not on YouTube sharing. So don't be fooled by these uh, healthy, healthy vending combo scammy machines. They look good. Their website looks super good, guys super clean website they're going to tell you everything you're going to have technology to track your you don't need uh to track your sales and 
know how many Cheetos you sold in a combo machine. They're preying on people. They're preying on people who don't know, okay? Does it come with a money back guarantee? That's how you know. Anything I sell comes with a money back guarantee. I don't make my money from there. I make my money from the vending, from actually doing the business, not from selling you the dream of doing the business. Think about that. Let's see, we have some chats coming through. Kodiak, Kodak. What two brands would you have started with? Vendo, AMS, done. Two brands. Are they a little bit more expensive? Yeah, but we're going to accounts that are quality accounts. Quality accounts. We're going to accounts that are doing a couple grand, a couple grand a month in sales. We're not going to accounts that need a $300 machine, excuse me, that's outside of a garage shop. That's not going to make any money that's going to break down, get vandalized, or have nothing but nothing but trouble with. Those are the two that I would have started with. How do you handle locations that have a contract with another vendor, but are receiving terrible service and can't get out because they're not locked into the contract? The way you destroy the way you destroy a contract is tell them it's just a service agreement. And if they say, "Oh, well, we're in the contract," well, when does the contract expire? Let me know. Let me know when the contract expires. Follow up with them when it does. Give them a sign-on bonus. Give them a reason to switch today. Here's two hundred and fifty dollars. Let's do this. Here's five hundred dollars. Let's do this. Give me one shot. No contract, no guarantee. If you want me out, we'll get out. Again, go all over all that. Hillvending.teachable.com. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Until next time, remember, keep your drinks cold and your snacks fresh.